y'all gonna stop playing in our face. We're gonna be reacting to uh, the Good Times trailer that Netflix put out. Just watch it and then we'll talk about it. I have important news. Let me guess, the state called and they wanna cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up, you can get paid for that? This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the dummy now? Me for not wearing a condom. Woo! Shadows fall over my heart. It all started with my grandfather, James Evans. My job as the man of this house is to take care of this family no matter what. I just want to let you know I'm going to take good care of Gray. Gray, <laughs> who is this n I'm about to kill? Juan, my boyfriend. Daddy, let him go. Maybe you should come with me. Junior's repeating the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive through Can you do OnlyFans? Take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. I'll take you to the dark side. Dear Black Heavenly Father, College Redeemer, uh, if you could just help us. Son, it's for you. New phone. Who this? All Black Everything. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Man, my mouth ready for some milk right now. Dalvin, why are you so breast obsessed? It's childish, man. Bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more childish than that. In a nocturnal state of mind. Your neighborhood is a real hole. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. Underneath this black, black sky. This is getting dangerous. I won't just sit back and let you put yourself in harm's way. I love you too very much. Everything, everything black. Revolution would not be televised. Come on, Rosa Paws. Can't you just enjoy this? We're just as good as the Evans of old. Isn't that just dynamite? But the truth is, we're the Evans of new. Uh. Bitch, you look like money. Black, black, black. Everything, everything black. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. Everything black, black bird, black moon, black sky, black light, black, everything black. Wait a minute. The baby? Little baby? And baby baby? Too many babies around this crib. <laughs> I really don't know why I expect anything different. Why 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 do I expect anything different? <laughs> why 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 does Netflix play in our face like this? I where do I where do I start? Where do I begin? There's not even much to react to in the sense of like, oh, this is outraging. Like, obviously, like obviously, right? It's like rage bait. It feels like they want to piss us off. Okay. That's out of the way. You, a mission accomplished. You succeeded, Netflix. What bothers me, I think, most about this, there's a couple of things. One of the things that bothers me most about this is the fact that Good Times was so progressive sharing the story of the, of the Evans family um, and, and starring some prolific actors of you know, the African-American canon, tackling social justice issues, family issues, class issues, issues, uh, cultural issues, and coming at them from a perspective that we can understand and relate to as a family that is, you know, trying to navigate their coming of age um, in an urban context. I remember seeing it as a kid and really thinking like how wholesome it was even as a child, like what the types of themes it shared and like it was this two parent household and they were both trying to navigate raising their three kids who were into their teens and just like all the highs and lows of that life. And it really expanded my perspective in terms of what we're used to seeing on TV. Um, we're just, we've really lost a lot of black sitcoms in that vein. I don't know what this just gave me. It's gave me heartburn. I feel like, like it just, it's not just bothersome because it's obnoxious and arrogant and um, ignorant is that they took intellectual property that was so prolific for the black family. And they're like, this is the modern twist. And the modern twist is just garbage and stereotypes. Seriously? Like, really? I'm so tired of Netflix. I haven't been canceled y'all. Cause I just, I don't understand like what we should be doing. Should we be clamoring at the bit for this? Like who was the audience base for this? I think that's the second thing that bothers me. Who 
is this for? This can't possibly be for people who saw the original good times in real time. This can't possibly be for millennials. Like y'all gotta be kidding me. Who, who wanted this? Who said yes to this? Oh, wait, I know who said yes to this. Steph Curry, uh, Norman Lear, Seth MacFarlane, Family Guy, American Dad. Influential in the animated, adult animated space. So him being on this project doesn't surprise me the least bit, but it sure as heck doesn't make me go, <laughs> I'm gonna watch and support that. But then Steph Curry, that's confusing. What are you doing, sir? Last I knew, I'm gonna look it up real quick because maybe I'm mistaken. He's a believer, a Christian, and uh, you know, at least professing. And so I'm a little confused as to why he would put himself on this kind of raunchy adult animated piece alongside Seth MacFarlane. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Did you want to watch this? Did you want to see this? I just don't understand why. I, I don't understand why people, and then all of the voice actors, like nobody can save this. Like as far as I'm concerned, Wanda Sykes, a legend obviously as a comedian, she can't save this project. I saw JB Smoove's name on there. He can't save this project. Like I just don't really understand why you would reboot this and insult the original sitcom and insult our intelligence. <sighs> Let me calm down. I'm, I'm so, I came on so hot. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I came on so negative and I don't, I don't like to do that. So let me, let me back up. Let me take a minute. A few moments later. I do like animation. I'm a big fan of a lot of shows. One of my favorites is like Bob's Burgers, for example. Still watch cartoons to this day. Like I'm a huge SpongeBob fan. I'm a huge Hey Arnold fan. All the 90s shows. I'm a huge King of the Hill fan. So I'm not necessarily against the fact that it's an animated piece. What I mind though, is that it just seems to lack heart. The same critique that Issa Rae's character, Sentara Golden, gives to Monk, Ellison in American Fiction, where she says that his book, his prank book basically lacks heart and it feels soulless. That's how I would describe this. It lacks heart and it feels soulless. It just feels empty. Do they test movies? Like do they have screen tests of movies when it comes to like stuff on Netflix? I don't know. Somebody in the comments, let me know. Like, is that something they do? Because I can't imagine that this tested well. If they do that, I can't imagine that people were like, yeah, Give me some more of that. And even thinking about people who may not know the original Good Times, right? They've never seen it. Why would you set this up and be like, yeah, we're gonna introduce this to a new generation. And it's just a bunch of foolishness. So the showrunner is Renata Shepard. I don't know her work. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little Google real quick. Known for Born Again Virgin as a producer. I don't, I don't know what that is. Connecting is a TV series. I'm not sure what that is either. Act Your Age, another series. So, so I don't know much of her work. It doesn't look like she's a ton on there, which is fine. Like I love a good new person as a showrunner, but who, um, why? Why did you take this one on sis? What, what, what was it about it? I, I don't know guys, I don't know. This just feels so basic. And then to top it all off, we got a drug dealing baby. Hey baby, <laughs> stop selling crack baby. You got your whole life ahead of you. Hey baby. <laughs> Baby, go home, man. It's three o'clock in the morning. The baby said, I'm selling weed, nigga. I said, oh. Which again, much funnier in a bit by Dave Chappelle than it is in animated form. <laughs> There's this race to see who can be the most outlandish. And it's really not about the content anymore. It's about getting as many eyeballs on it as possible. And you know, to be completely frank, this has uh, on Netflix's YouTube channel, this video has 225,000 views in five days, which is actually like, frankly, is kind of low for, um, you know, an account that has 28 million subscribers. So just, it's, it's odd to me that they thought this was doing something and maybe they're using this trailer as a means of kind of seeing how things go. But the show releases in a few days, it says that it releases the same month that this trailer has come out. So I think most of us agree this is not what we want. I'm looking at the comments on the page and you can already see that like most people are already like, they're not here for it. Can we just start a petition to not know, to not have this aired? Seriously. Yeah. Uh, black people, we are better than this. Let's please stop watching and glorifying this nonsense over and over and over again. Again, um, dang, I didn't know the clan had a screenwriting department. Somebody at the meeting really said, what if like the baby is a drug dealer? Like this, this is so embarrassing. They made sure they didn't leave out negative stereotypes and a theme, theme song that says everything black. 
to quote Ice Cube, here's what they think about you. But I am so grateful, y'all. I'm so grateful that we're turning a page, it seems, in culture, where even stuff that I used to be like, man, they really letting that on TV? Are they letting that out? Now people are waking up and going, really, y'all? It just feels like minstrelsy all over again. It feels like we are in blackface. We are in blackface and our our experiences and our culture is a costume that people can play with or people who are not a part of the black experience that are writing these stories and then and then spoon feeding it back to us. What if this was a legitimate idea that somebody, a, a black producer or what have you, or somebody who worked on it on Good Times originally came in and said, you know, yeah, this would be great to reboot Good Times for a new generation. And slowly over time, every change seemed to go further and further away from the idea of progression. I want more um, black people and people of color writing our own stories, of course. I just don't know if I want it in the context of Hollywood or Netflix or whatever, because I just don't think that we can remain integral in those spaces because they gonna keep playing in our face. I, I usually like to be very intentional about the content that I create on this channel and, and provide you great stuff that you can go and look into. And, and more of that is on the way. But I would say um, that this is just my heart's cry, my plea uh, with this channel in general, and also with just the way that I work is that we have got to be more integral as creative people. We have to be more integral as people of color, if that's who you are. And if you're white <laughs> or, or somebody who is in a, in a majority part of society, you can be allied in this by not letting this stuff go forward. Don't put your money behind this stuff. Like it's not, don't invest in it. You know, if you're somebody who's watching, you don't have to go watch this. Like the trailer was enough for me. I'm not going to do a review or anything like that when it comes out. I don't need to. And um, I hope just like everything else on Netflix, it gets canceled after one season. Uh, if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear your perspective. Please drop it in the comments below. And remember, you can subscribe to this channel. You can like the video. That is all stuff that you can do to support me and support the channel. And the mission that I have to go forward of finding redemption in media. Messages that really ha, bring us full circle and bring us to a place of, of growth. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now.